So here we go. So welcome. This is the webinar, Growing the Next Generation of Healthy Youth. My name is Tara Christensen Stiller. I am the Community Development Supervisor at RuleCap, working for the Resource Basket. And I am Olutik Aleut from Old Harbor and King Cove, Alaska. Today's presentation, um, I really want to focus on how we could better improve the health and wellness of our youth by uh, utilizing, you know, a combination of tools, the research and data, so socio-ecological models involving youth in the process of research and integrating traditional ecological models as well as traditional values. So in the chat box, we would appreciate if you can um, let us know where you are viewing today's presentation from, what community, and if you have more than one person in the room with you joining us today. Like I said, we're here in Anchorage at Rule Cap. Our vision is healthy people, sustainable communities, and vibrant cultures. We have a um, many programs that we have here at Rule Cap, such as Head Start, Early Childhood Learning, Energy Environment, Housing Weatherization, Health, and Youth Development. So Growing the next generation of healthy youth. Um, we know that health is a broad topic and um, there are many things that we can look at in order to develop better programs and um, projects that will strengthen um, our youth's overall health and wellness through research, integration of models involving youth and the youth development, engaging at-risk tribal youth in activities that are culturally driven, creating opportunities, um, developing prevention and intervention services, and development and implementation of your new tribal best practices and traditional healing methods to support your tribal youth. So what I'm hoping you get out of this presentation is some ideas um, to look at when you're in your community trying to plan um, a prevention program or a health and wellness program that is aimed at increasing health and decreasing um, disparities among our youth and supporting overall wellness while integrating our traditional ways, values, practices, etc. So the first thing, um, so how can we improve mental health and wellness of our youth? Um, the first thing I look at is what we know. And an example of what we know is um, some information we can look at to draw upon. Uh, the prevalence of mental health problems and risk factors is the youth um, Alaska Youth Risk Behavior Survey. So why would we look at this? And what, what, what is the purpose of this? To monitor the prevalence of health risk behaviors among youth in grades nine through 12. The survey uh, requests youth from 43 schools that are randomly selected statewide to voluntarily complete a survey it captures behaviors such as overweight, obesity, physical activity, tobacco use, alcohol use, social support, mental health, and interpersonal violence. So if you look at the um, chart here that I have for you, this is the most recent YRBS survey from traditional high schools statewide from Alaska. 
So when we see this, you see there's um, red circles, green circles, and then arrows that go both directions. So when we look at this, my eye usually goes towards red, which usually directs us to the trends that shows the increase in risk. So this is just one example of research that we can look at to determine the risk of our youth. There are many other types of research we can look at um, to see the current rates of um, uh, mental illness, disease, and other uh, social determinants um, of health. So my question is, what can we do with this data? Alone, um, you could do quite a bit in actuality. I put minimal just for the presentation. We could raise awareness, we could try to think of ways for youth to do, uh, ways and programs for youth to decrease and improve behaviors, but how? So, like I was saying, we use those numbers and other data specific to your community and your youth while also working to discover what makes individuals resilient to these mental health problems to inform prevention strategies. That's a starting point, right? But before moving forward and taking action, we need to take a step back um, and involve youth in the process. A lot of times we develop programs without even having any youth in the room, thinking that, you know, if we have the information and we have, you know, community health models that tell us how to plan these programs and projects. And, you know, we are integrating cultural aspects, but in the end, if we don't have youth voice involved, our likelihood of a successful program is um, not very high. We wanna give them a voice um, to plan and be involved and give them a role and purpose um, so that they can support their own their own peers in increasing wellness and health. Cultural relevance in planning. So the importance of integration of the soci sociological model that I'll talk about here in a second, traditional ecological models understanding of risk factors, mental health, protective factors, and resilience together to build a wellness model made by and for your youth. So really tailoring all of these things to fit your community, to fit your youth, to fit your, your cultural, your specific community, um, social norms and practices and ways of living. So digging deeper, we have here the social ecological web uh, model. And this was, this is a community health model that um, really opened my eyes when I was in uh, undergrad public health. And really made me see how it's not just the individual we should be focusing on, but all of these layers that affect the individual, they influence the behavior of the individual. You see this first layer is individual, the second is um, social cultural um, relationship, and then you have social economic structural uh, which involves community and political, environmental, is involved in societal. So now what? From looking at this diagram and recalling YRSP data, now what? 
digging deeper, what else should we be looking at to build more on this puzzle? Um, so from a literature review uh, that was done in 2013, a group of uh, researchers identified 40 protective factors at the individual, family, and community levels um, that were found to enhance Indigenous youth mental health. They reviewed over 160 records of information examining protective factors and causal mechanisms that promote and enhance Indigenous youth mental health in the circumpolar north. And they were researching to ask the question, what protective factors that support and promote circumpolar Indigenous youth mental health resilience and why do these factors enhance resilience? So then we add those to the puzzle. So at the individual level, behavioral habits, socialization from parents, family, you have biophysical characteristics such as genetics, systemic vulnerability, um, awareness and knowledge about health risks and how to deal with health issues. You have personal attitudes and motivations and developmental stage, adolescent and adult. So family community, this encompasses the social, cultural and social economic and structural groups in which you have your social peer groups, the lifestyle patterns, um, cultural attitudes, beliefs and their implications for health level of social support, um, poverty, education, access to health care and prevention services information, social stress, social stress, stressors, sorry, such as civil strife, neighborhood violence, racial and other discrimination. And another example is access to clean water. So looking more into the individual um, social cultural group level, we see um, sense of purpose um, on their individual level, physical being in their home community wanting to contribute, useful, be useful to others, take care of others, and give back to the community, such as being a role model. Wanting mindfulness and awareness of consequences of one's individual actions upon the community and reflection. Sense of responsibility to oneself, family, and or community learning values of harmony and cooperation, as well as autonomy and hardiness. High level of academic achievement, ethnic pride, cultural identity and affiliation, traditional knowledge, cultural values and practice, such as eating traditional foods, being out on the land, doing subsistence activities, attending tribal events, listening to traditional stories, um, also systems of reciprocity and reciprocal bonds, physical activity and active lifestyle, self-reliance, for example, seeking support from a friend, keeping a journal, creatively handling problems, believing in oneself and being committed to community and culture. So this is vital in creating a positive um, social environment, which in turn interacts on the individual level to enhance resilience. And I apologize if I'm going too fast. I will provide these notes afterwards. So when we look at social cultural group level, we see emphasis on the roles of cultural and land-based activities, history, language, and importance of social and family supports. Um, 
cultural protective factors, like I said, practicing traditional activities and having a positive ethnic identity. And I'm gonna come back to this shared leadership slide, but I wanna get to, um, I'm gonna go back to the family slide really quick. I'll just go back because I have a few more. Okay, family and community. So in this level, um, family and community definitely play a part in the world of the individual through um, close relationships with parents, uh, affection and praise, models of sobriety and safe protective family environment, transmission of expectations and values, family history of having received treatment for a psychiatric problem. Um, this comes into play in communities. Um, I know growing up there was a, a large stigma on um, mental health and going to see a psychiatrist now it's it's kind of it's not as bad anymore but we need to be supportive when we do have um, mental illness and not going with the stigma stigmatizing of it supporting them and uplifting people who need the support they need on that level other factors of other positive factors of family include parental approval of friends, sense of being treated as special or valued, kinship structure, for example, family connectedness and the importance of extended family and adopted kin, native language learned at home and competence in native language, ethnic so socialization at home. And for community, Youth are looking for positive role models, a sense of collective responsibility and community connectedness, sense of belonging in their community, meaningful opportunities to be involved within the community or school, safe places, supportive, caring, encouraging, cohesive communities that show concern and reach out to youth, strong relationships with community members, with their peers and other adults, aunties, uncles, mentorship from older generations, having that um, vital piece of elder and youth working together, continuous communication, talking and interaction. Cultural revitalization, community recognition, respect and appreciation. So some protective factors and causal Causal pathway that was found in this um, literature review of uh, protective mental health factors and of the social cultural group include kinship, um, close relationship with peers. This allows opportunity for youth to take on adult like roles and offer support, be dependable, responsible, and responsive to others provides a chance to develop awareness of others and also to receive support from peers. Social network includes relationships with family, peers, and community members. Relationships and friendships can mediate access to culture and material assets and therefore increase one's capacity um, to friends that can provide support resources such as um, if a if youth were going out hunting or ice fishing and their friends had a snow machine or a Honda that they could go together, that's another um, vital social network uh, piece there. Mentorship from older generations, like I said, sources of support and guidance and how to handle problems, provides examples to youth of how to get through difficult well instilling belief in youth and that they could get through difficulties like their mentors and ancestors before them. Protective ethnic identity, 
include learning and practicing culture, um, such as subsistence activities and traditional practices. This supports and strengthens self-esteem, ethnic identity, and self-regulation skills. Sharing cultural knowledge enhances in-group cohesiveness and support through experiences of shared meaning, meaning making. Also provides an opportunity to participate in the passing down of traditional knowledge and cultural value, values, thus creating a feeling of keeping culture alive. Um, it enhances relationship between youth and the land and between youth and their families, facilitates and creates a context for important mentoring relationships and connection to older generations, leading youth to feel more supported. Gaining new skills through hunting, fishing, gathering and growing and increasing that knowledge. They develop a sense of ethnic pride um, it provides a meaningful way for you to contribute and give back to the community, earn respect for skills, and feel appreciated from the community through sharing that skill, such as um, I know in my community, our youth, if they go hunt deer, it's always expected of them um, to bring back meat and share it with an elder or another family. Subsistence skills demonstrate strength and survival that are associated with the ability to respond and be resilient in the face of hardship. Being out of the land requires youth to act selflessly, be responsible and less petty, show respect, rely on others, and distinguish between what is essential versus trivial. Meaningful engagement in traditional activities contributes to their sense of purpose, feeling, more self-efficient and staying busy. Traditional activities associated with fulfillment, sense of calm, and sense of being special. Show culture continuity, continuity with one's heritage and connects youth to sense how life used to be. Provides time with parents to learn new skills and how to be in the world. So positive cultural and ethnic identity and shared heritage factors leads to an increase in self-esteem, feelings of self-worth, connectedness, um, provides sense of belonging, offers perspectives to draw from and overcome challenges, evokes a sense of strength and capability, creates a larger shared context in which youth can situate themselves and their struggles in relation to others, to their history, and to the collective. Provides a means to structure one's understanding and ideas of their role in the world. Um, for example, as a youth or as an Alaska Native. Ethnic socialization. Oops. This is influence on interpersonal and intra-psychic processes, which increases self-confidence, develops positive attitudes toward ethnic identity, teaches self-regulation and coping skills, native language, personal and relational significance, um, plays an important role of you know, that cultural identity, um, that strengthens group cohesion, personal pride, and sense of history and culture. Some other um, factors that were recognized were uh, regular church attendance in which they participated. They were involved in the community activity, engaging community, family networks, strengthening social ties, build strong social support, and also offer consolation and hope in difficult times. So as I'm going through these, kind of think back to the, um, the social ecological model and think of your community and try to think of how they these factors apply to your community and your youth.
on all these different levels. Um, so in addition to um, regular church attendance, they had high academic achievement. This provides youth the source of self-esteem. It builds problem-solving skills, prevents or presents hope for their future. Having awareness, mindfulness, and reciprocity of action. Um, this is a mechanism in itself in which individuals who are socialized in this context are more sensitive to the effects of their behaviors as on the whole and draw strength from that wholeness. Um, having this sense of being treated as special or important, we touched on this quite a bit through positive cultural, ethnic identity, and shared heritage pieces. Um, but it, it's important because it encourages youth to live up to high standards and be responsible for themselves and others. Also, thinking about, you know, sense of being treated as special and important integrating your traditional values right there living up to those traditional values of your own alaska native um, heritage um, that's that's an easy one right there um, providing opportunities for youth in the community at the school with the research project um, opportunities involved with research as co-researchers engages and empowers youth, giving them a sense of control and ownership. So if you were to do a research project with youth to determine your community's specific protective factors, that would be an opportunity that would be really powerful for them to engage and learn and um, uh, really have the opportunity to be a part of something that is not only going to affect them, but it's going to affect their community and they'll feel um, a sense of empowerment and have that high academic achievement piece there too. Um, Self-reflection often leads to conscious decision. For example, um, if they have a good self-reflection, they'll make better decisions um, whether or not to drink or what is drinking responsibly. Um, rolling into the next one of others, being responsible through activities like fixing something, um, doing homework, watching their siblings, babysitting, raising money for the community, doing chores. Uh, this provides youth an opportunity to contribute in a meaningful way and gain a sense of purpose and personal well-being. It also demonstrates autonomy and community connectedness. And um, opportunities like shared leadership as you see on the screen right now. Um, you could see how at the bottom it's no voice where a it's a classroom setting where a teacher is speaking to you and then if you allow them input that's the next step up in shared leadership and then you give them a choice in the activities and then you have them sitting on the board or their own council um, providing a, uh, a strategic method of positive decision-making and leadership. Sense of belonging in home community. Um, through the sense of belonging in one's home community, you feel more connected to their culture, um, environmental, uh, we know over the past 50 years, we've had a transition of lifestyle and livelihood changing um, in which our communities have experienced inequalities in housing, healthcare, education, employment in comparison to non-Indigenous populations. 
um, our youth are growing up in a generation different uh, different world in comparison to their parents and grandparents facing new challenges and are having to navigate multiple and competing worlds and value systems. Um, I know myself, <laughs> there's many, many worlds that I have to participate in and understand um, beyond, you know, that individual level in order to be successful in this thing they call life, I guess. So providing that supportive, nurturing, growing environment um, and just being there for kids is really positive. So like I said, providing opportunities and support, what does that look like? Um, allowing them to have input in the programs and projects that they're participating in, ha giving them a choice is, uh, to make relevant and meaning meaningful choices and then shared leadership, provide opportunities um, to give them that sense of responsibility. So thinking of all of those um, protective factors and how we could use them to create um, better um, health promotion, disease prevention programs. Um, this is an example of one of the projects that I um, worked on and so what I did was integration of traditional and modern knowledge um, for a childhood obesity prevention program. It utilized one bottle from the Western world of evidence-based um, energy balance concepts, and then it integrated my elutic, um, Alutic seasonal cycle in which the activities throughout the calendar year occurred, such as you see on the right, family activities, plants, animals gathered, and then you look at on the left side, the energy balance concepts. Um, Uh, provide examples of comparable traditional physical activities that define what type of activities are considered to be less vigorous more time or more vigorous less time. And this is just one example of how you can integrate traditional models with evidence-based models um, using the indigenous theoretical framework such as in my community, the elliptic seasonal cycle. Um, is really vital and um, as we know from hearing all those protective factors that our traditional knowledge provides. And we can therefore integrate all of those together and make better pro better programs and have healthier youth as an outcome. So this is just more of um, the pro project that I was working on to integrate um, a project that utilized traditional and modern knowledge um, for the development of a better program. So recommendations, um, continue cultural education, integrate your values, integrate your traditional practices, um, do the research, uh, look at those, the latest statistics, um, also look to your elders for advice, look to your youth for knowledge, 
um, conduct evaluations that um, are appropriate in your community, have the youth be part of developing evaluation plans, um, do pilot testing, um, increase awareness of the research that you find, and um, continue on utilizing um, and developing the next best practices for your tribal youth wellness projects. Um, yep, so that concludes today. I know there was a lot of information, um, but I'm hoping to break down um, each of these levels of social, economic, ec ecological uh, levels and really go in a little bit further, possibly on the next webinar on um, that integration of traditional and um, modern day evaluation and also evidence-based models. Are there any questions? Yeah, there was a lot in this presentation, but I wanted to provide a foundation. And um, once you have those notes, then we could move into how I was showing you the um, integration models and how you could do that for your community and developing uh, culture uh, camp guides in the future that are uh, unique to your values and traditional practices. Um, we don't have a date for the next one, but um, I think we will send out a save the date shortly after. So stay tuned. All right, everyone, have a good day. Please email me if you have any questions. And thank you. And this webinar will be um, posted to our website, resourcebasket.org. Thank you. Thank you. And my computer is frozen. Yeah, my computer is sometimes frozen. You did it. Awesome. I think I'm still on because my computer is frozen. I'll just make my my. Um. Said you're, you're done. Okay. You click stop recording. I can't. It's frozen. My computer's frozen. You can go out and go out and delete. I tried. <laughs> so I think I just have to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go. Yeah, we'll, we'll provide all of your notes and everything on the website. Holy moly, I don't like talking that much. I thought it was a lot of talking. Very informative, too. Yeah. I just wish it was more visual, but I try to make it just pictures and then me talking because research shows that 
you either are gonna they're gonna be reading and not listening to you or they're gonna listen mm -hmm. and just look at a picture right yeah so, there's a balance yeah, yeah. so there's no oh. point in having a presentation where they're just reading the screen and then yeah, you don't want that so yeah and these are all your notes right yeah i have to just clean them up mm -hmm. Wow, I can't believe I stayed in that time frame. Yeah. Um, actually, it ended a little early. Um, we're going from 11 to 12 time frame. Yeah. It's like 11.50 right yeah. now. <sighs> Was that your first time hosting? Or? No, it's just um, information that I'm really passionate about, but there's so much that I try to include everything and probably went too fast through it. So well, it's good that you have it in the series. So yeah. you have like part one, part two. Yeah. Because like I said, I mean all those levels can be broken down mm -hmm. and then you could see how each of those are affected. Yeah. Which can be presentations in themselves. So mm -hmm. this is do you plan to have, um, I know you're going to have another future webinar. Um, do you plan to have like three series, three parts? Um, I don't know. Yet. It just depends on mm -hmm. how much I think I could cover and what's appropriate in the sections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, at least uh, most of it will be on the website. So, mm -hmm. and I'll. I'll make a copy of your recording and post it on the site for those who came in late. Um, oh, well, thanks for. Yeah, you killed it. Yeah, I know there's a lot of talking, but you know sometimes people are uh, more attentive when you. Um, speak kind of fast pace. Yeah, because they're probably writing down notes as I'm talking because there's no notes on there. So yeah. that helps them to keep the knowledge too by writing mm -hmm. lots of their sensory. Um, and if they miss their chance, they, they have a copy on the site. So they can do that. I know how to do that part really well. <laughs> okay. And then Charlie got in, so. Um, I didn't create an evaluation, but if you want to just use the general one that we use and just change mm -hmm. the information. Um, did we confirm anybody for February yet? Uh, we were thinking about Kimberly. She wanted to do a tribal court 101 for February. I'm sure she'll bring that up this afternoon. So maybe, um, I don't want to go too far without doing another one to keep them. Yeah, it's so at the end of a month, just do another one. And it could, maybe it'd be shorter, just a half hour. Mm -hmm. And I think that might be better to do those smaller ones where people don't have to commit a whole hour yeah. and do more of those. Some more frequent little half an hour blocks. Yeah. Maybe like, um, okay, you did one at the end of January. The so, next one would be mid-February. Yeah, right? so we could have our regular webinars, which are those hour long or more. Mm -hmm. And then we could have like lunch and learn. Okay. 30 minute quick webinar on yeah. any topic, you know, like that sure. sort of thing. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, because it's important to keep people in the loop consistently or else, um, you know, and that's part of the problem is our participation has been kind of low because they forget that they mm -hmm. Well, we can, I think we're going to have a resource basket meeting sometime on Friday, I think. Or, I think Joey was trying to set that up. Yeah, I think so. I'm so stressed about this presentation because I want it to be useful and meaningful, but there's so much information that there is. And it's kind of hard to break it down. Yeah.
but I, I will make sure that all the attendees have a copy of the recording of notes. And I'll send you a draft first to get your, you know. It's weird to be online when you don't hear anybody talking back to you. I know, it's like you're talking to a wall. Yeah, <laughs> that's why it's so, because uh, that's why I like the face-to-face -face yeah. interactions. Yeah. You might as well be talking to yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. So something I need to post on the Facebook I'll send it to you. Sure. Um, it's uh, applications for the 2019 summer internship for first last Okay. We got people from Billingham, Copper River, Kasluck. No, Kasigluck. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, we have our oh, copper center. That's right. We yeah. have our um, meeting at meeting two o'clock. Oh, two? Is there two of them? Um, I'll go check Mullins if you know it. I haven't written this. It's either one or two o'clock. Oh, I think you're right. It is. It's to, for people like me and Kimberly other temporary. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I'm going to um, post the recording and then make sure you like listen to the front end of it and delete you know, all yeah, because that's what I do. I oh, okay. did before. I did okay. that with the history and hope. Perfect. I didn't want all that yeah. garbage. <laughs> and then at the end, you've done all that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's what I did. I edited um, Sue's stuff and then posted later. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sue. You're welcome.
I can still hear some sound in here. I wonder if there's still a court or still a sound or something. Yeah, my computer like froze. <laughs> 